to avoid a uh, fiery debate with the whole MJ and LeBron, which we will revisit. Don't worry. And all these facts that we put out there, MJ's, you know, uh, brand and, you know, of course, LeBron's player empowerment. We'll, we'll get into all that when we talk in that big old the goat, goat debate. But we will. we're going to transition uh, to a more semi-sensitive subject with the, you know, this happened about two weeks ago. Um, really big game, Utah State's women's head coach, Kayla Ard. I think I'm saying that correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, she and the, was it the Lady Mountain West? They mm-hmm. had a very embarrassing loss to the, I think it's the Boise, well, like Boise State. I probably, I probably butchered that. Boise State. Boise State. They lost 85 to 49. Really embarrassing way to lose. Um, Finished the season five and twenty-five overall, and two and sixteen in the in the twenty-three twenty-four season. Um, so, before, right before the press conference in, in that embarrassing game on that Sunday against uh, Boise State, she was informed she was let go by the uh, what was it team president of operations? I'm sure whatever whoever ran the team let her go right before she got out there for that post conference. Um, so, how, what are your thoughts about her being let go right before the post game? Like the, the reporter asked her, um, <laughs> you know, how are you feeling about next season? What are your thoughts of getting the girls ready for next season? And she's like, I would know. <laughs> they let me go right before I came out here. So I'm just, I'm just trying to get your thoughts because it was a kind of a messed up situation. But she's, she is a. Uh... They should probably keep her because she is a prized uh, employee because anyone else would have completely bypassed that uh, that press conference, that post conference uh, presser. Um, I mean, how you fire somebody right before they go out to talk to the press? I mean, that's that's really cruel. I mean, that's just not. But I guess that was better than waiting until afterwards that after she gave her thoughts about what she's going to do next season then find out there won't be a next season so i mean she's she's a good one because that's 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 rough to have somebody uh, to be fired uh right after a game or right after you uh, work and you have to go talk to some people about the game that you just got fired for or the season you just got fired for so I mean, she's she's better than a lot of us because a lot of us would probably have to be escorted out because we just lost our our jobs. Yeah, uh, she's better than me. Um, it probably would have been one of the funniest press conferences of all time. When you got to lose, you already lost your job. So you I, I lost my job already. So ain't nothing stopping me from airing out all this team's dirty laundry. You know why we couldn't? You know why? <laughs> Look at the team, man. We lost by 40, almost 40 plus points. All right. This girl can't go left if she tried. This girl couldn't <laughs> shoot if she was two two inches in front of the basket. You know, this girl can't see outside the three-point line, but she's still shooting them. I would have went in. <laughs> hey, she is really professional. And my I tip my pro off to her. She is a really phenomenal person. Showed great, you know, Boys, sportsmanship. Was, yeah, you know, all all she deserves all the flowers, you know. And yeah. I wish her nothing but the best in her next coaching endeavor, whatever that may be. But for me, whoo, <laughs> they would never, people. they would not get me back on that college stage because it would have been rough. Yeah, I would have, I would have left. I was like, there's nothing else for me to say. I mean, oh, nah. <laughs> I'd go. I left. Oh no. Nah. I mean, and I know emotions running high, and she was emotional during that. But, whoo, I would have let them have it. Like, y'all been like, y'all got 20, 30, however many minutes to press conference. Y'all got this time. Ask me any question. <laughs> I already lost my job. What's up? <laughs> mm. yeah, but, that was rough. But on to a more positive side, as you all, I'm sure, has been hearing the buzz. The uh, WNBA and NCAA for women's basketball poster child, <clears throat> Caitlin Clark, has been offered to play in Ice Cube's Big Three for $5 million. 
Um, it'd be only, and this would be only two games would technically for the big three would conflict with her eventual, what everybody believes her is her next team in the Indiana Fever. Um, the schedule will include, include eight regular season games and two playoff games. Um, so before I get into any more of the details, CW, what are your thoughts of Caitlin Clark to the big three? Uh, extremely smart business move. Um, Ice Cube sees that there's value in women's basketball right now, and she's probably the face of it. So why not, uh, you know, get a piece of the pie while you can before she gets pulled here or she gets signs a contract where she's, you know, exclusive to whoever, WNBA or overseas or wherever. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a good look. I mean, I'm sure he's probably eyeing Angel Reese or somebody else. I mean, right now, women's basketball, especially in college, is more, uh, they're getting more eyeballs than the men. So it's it's on the rise. And I'm going to save what I'm going to say, save what I'm going to say for later after I get your thoughts. But uh, I think some people won't agree with me, but you know, I think she's she's somebody that's going to change women's basketball for forever. I agree. And I think not only her, but if you could find a way where you could get, you know, Angel Reese and other players of, the, of their caliber into the big three, you know, for like, like I said, those three, three exhibition games, you could have some really good, you know, some really good games on your hands with with just mm -hmm. the women you know obviously you yeah. can intertwine the teams as necessary but could you imagine caitlin clark and angel reese going head to head like not in the 5v5 <clears throat> you know setting like you know how we saw yeah. in, you know ncaa last year but just like a 3v3 you gotta guard me i gotta guard you what's up That's must watch no, tv no ducking straight up mm -hmm. right and because of how the big three is structured, you have to really guard. Yeah. There really is no backside help. You got to guard. So it's like all that talk, because you know Angel Reese, you love that talk, right? She's <laughs> with that energy. And I love that about her. Like, she does not back down from anybody. Not at all. Even, even that big girl from, uh, I don't, I forgot what school she goes to, but. Uh, she, the one that just scored 40 and 20 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The I one that's been giving that, everybody yeah. buckets, right? Yeah, put her in there too. Can't nobody stop. She's like prime Shaq. Can't nobody I mean, stop this her. Is, this might be the move for women because, and we've I've heard the rumblings that the WNBA wants to break away from the NBA. I don't know how smart that is, but if this takes off, then yeah, they can because the NBA is really not, you know, uh, advertising them like they should or marketing the WNBA like they should. I mean, most of I don't even really know when the season starts so um maybe they need to go a different route and you know maybe the big three big three ice cube's not really too happy with the nba because of some stuff that's going on so this might be his way of saying we're going to make something big and what i was going to say is i'm not saying their games or anything alike but caitlin clark could be the michael jordan of women's basketball where she takes it global and really puts the stamp on you know eyeballs getting eyeballs to the game um mm. she's done it very quickly and even um and this is another point but even the Steph, what was it, Steph and sabrina was that her name the, yeah, yeah uh that was one of the most talked about segments in all-star weekend so the women are really being noticed now and they're seeing that their skill set matches what some of the best of the men can do and people are wanting to watch that because that's good basketball and that's you know you can market that so especially with the nba in the way it's going right now that it's not the most watched and people aren't really into it like they used to be ice cube might have got a gold mine um and i don't know it's five million for just one season or is it over a certain think, period of time just for that one season um that's, that's huge and I, there's like some talks about you know she may or may not do it you know because they're talking about like because she's already made like roughly like three three point five million in nil deals for that mm -hmm. year 
you know, now obviously, you know, she'd be getting major sponsorships, you know, mm-hmm. after her conclusion at um, Iowa State. Um, obviously, she's not afraid to play against, you know, grown men. So if she were to have to go up against any professionals, ex professionals, overseas mm-hmm. players, I'm sure she would give them a run for their money. If not, mop the floor with them. I'm just going to be honest. Um, it, the, I guess maybe the main concern would be maybe sending the WNBA the wrong message. Like, like think of this as like, because I don't want to speak on a different player, but like, say like, because she's got the kind of the hype of like a LeBron, a Wimby, like mm-hmm. Zion. Like we got these, this pantheon, potentially pantheon great woman mm-hmm. standing right before us. Someone's already offering her a bigger bag than we can probably offer her. Yeah. And it's like, we, you're supposed to be our poster child because the WNBA, <laughs> we, they right there. They, they are just begging for her whenever they she gets there. They need her. Absolutely. They need her. And it's like, you're, you're Caitlin Clark. You got, you got some decisions to make. Cause uh, honestly, yeah. if, if her rookie contract, but like, honestly speaking, if her rookie contract is probably going to be around 80,000 this season, right? Yep. Roughly. How can you turn down 5 million for like you what? Eight games? You can go work at eight to five and make more than what she's going to be making having to put her health on the line and having to, you know, work hard. Like at that and, point, and let five me million. Look at the big three, like consistently. Like, yeah, I'll do the Dolby NBA and you know, I'll rack up my, my championships and my accolades, but like mm-hmm. where I get my bread, my food on the table. Yeah. Big three, where we at? Just imagine those ratings if they are able to advertise and market it like they sh- should. Imagine what people are going to, how many people are going to tune in to see Caitlyn, you know, play even, even with the men, you know, play with the men. And then her game translates into well into a big three because she's not going to drive and try to dunk on no, no man. She's nah. going to shoot. And, you know, she can create enough space. She's young enough, fast enough, probably. She can create enough space where she can do what she does best and that's shoot. So, brilliant move by ice cube to you know throw his name in the hat and potentially get a huge star that can that can you know change the game for women all together but also bring the big three to another level yeah i, I hope there's some tracks some real tracks are behind this and this isn't a fake rumor you know i, I hope he grabs as many of the great you know, up and coming WNBA talent as possible because this could really be something like a potential gold mine, like you said. I just so, hope it pans out. And some imagine people, that, yeah, imagine him getting Juju and you know, the girl, the big chat girl, and Woo! Angel and Caitlin. All these players, special, man, yeah, all these players in a three on three type setting where you really get to see what they can do, and like right before the draft. You yeah. can see them go go at it three v three. The top six prospects. Oh, that would do. That would do numbers. And, that would be crazy. And that's gonna make the WNBA say, "Hey, we got to. We're gonna have to come with a little bit more than." So they may have to split from the NBA and find some kind of sponsors or somebody to, you know, buy them or take them over. And you know, if they see if if. You know, Ice Cube's able to get this big three thing going and they see what kind of ratings, what kind of uh, press they can get from that. You know, one of these billionaires might say, let me put my money in this pot. And, you know, the WNBA is split from NBA and we're going to market these girls like crazy and get them some big TV deals somewhere else than ESPN and these places that aren't going to market them. So, you know, I think on the side note, I think like realistically, I could see some NBA players retiring, you know, in like the near like five year future who would, you know, get together and probably try to take over the WNBA. And, you know, because a lot of NBA players are actually fans of the WNBA and they don't agree with how they've been marketed. Like, like you said, and obviously Ice Cube doesn't agree with it either. So it's like you got all these people starting to align for the same goal. We just need a little bit more movement, a little bit more friction. And they could really take that league and make it like what it should be you know because yeah. you know, yeah, marketing these girls getting them you know better pay yeah 
and things of that nature. It's sad they have to go overseas to really make any money. Yeah. Um, when they're American born players and they have a whole organization here for professional basketball, but they have to go overseas to really make any kind of money. So, you know, it's, I think Ice Cube is going in the right direction of trying to get this homegrown and bring, keep these girls here because this is where they can be marketed. This is where the eyeballs can come and see them because right now there's a market for it people want to see it. so i'm all for it because i enjoy what they're doing and they're a little more i won't say they're more competitive but they're a little more feisty than the than the men uh you know oh, everybody's yeah. kind of everybody's kind of buddy buddy in the nba they they clearly don't like each other so <laughs> you know they're gonna go out there and compete yeah but uh that that's going to do it for this episode. You got any other closing remarks to this episode? Uh, just please like and subscribe. Continue to uh, check us out here on YouTube, and uh, thank you for supporting us. Yes, sir. Hopefully, we'll we'll be back sooner than, than the <laughs> yeah, two weeks yeah. that we've kind of been been going. Hopefully, we can get a little bit more consistency. If my my yeah. schedule allows, you know. And mine too. I'm. I'm <laughs> oh, also, uh, if you want to check out Line Heart basketball on instagram line heart 336 my son plays for him so uh see clips pretty much on a not daily but weekly basis they have different tournaments so you'll see some pretty good basketball they got they got some work to do but you'll see some <laughs> pretty good basketball on there stay tuned for another potential topic on uh, a little dis- a little heated discussion between him and his son over a uh, certain oh, play yeah, call yeah. over yeah well we'll get into that yeah, in a know, later we'll, episode but yeah we will just, definitely just know that's that yes <laughs> y'all need to hear this because the wise old man knows what he's talking about <laughs> we'll see but all right y'all that's gonna do it y'all have a blessed one all right enjoy your long weekend and happy easter happy easter